Welcome to Linden Elevator's YouTube series on hydraulic elevator valves. Today we'll be discussing the Dover I-2 and the I-3 valves. This is the Dover I-2 valve. It comes in two different flow rates. There is a 30 to 100 gallon per minute and a 100 to 215 gallon per minute. This is the Dover I-3. It's larger. It has a 250 to 350 gallon per minute flow rate. Aside from the size difference, there are other ways to tell these valves apart. On the side, this side of the valve, you'll notice that there is an ID tag. This ID tag has a model number on it. The model numbers in the early days was a six digit number that started with a one. In the later Tissen years, this tag has been replaced with a sticker and the model number often starts with a seven, or most often starts with a seven. The primary differences between the Dover I-2 and I-3 are flow rates. Other than that, they are identical in their adjustments. There are some adjusters that are not marked on these valves. We'll go over some of those adjustments, then we'll discuss how old your valve is and whether it's worth working on. The manual lowering is the T-handle right here. This is an unmarked adjustment. On this end of the valve, we have what Dover refers to as the low pressure regulator most other valves refer to it as the bypass. This is the adjustment that you use to size the valve. You turn this adjuster in until the car starts to move, then you turn it out until the car stops moving, then you take another half turn. I cannot stress enough, this adjustment must be done when the car is at running temperature. If you fail to do this at the running temperature, when you get a load in the car and you're leveling, the car will stall. This is your leveling speed adjuster. It's approximately one inch in diameter and the leveling adjuster is in for faster, out for slower. On the other end of the valve, back here, we have your down main and down leveling speed adjuster. This will be discussed in great length in the down module for this section, but this is the one that scares everybody and the one that there's the most misunderstanding about. Please follow the down adjusting instructions in the next couple of modules. On the back side of the valve, you have the uh, ports for checking your pressure. This is your jack pressure. This is your pump pressure. Now, this valve has been made for many, many, many years. The very earliest version of this valve was the Dover Integral Valve. It was not an I valve. I mean, it was the I valve, not an I1. The primary visual difference is the pressure relief cartridge that comes out of the side of the up control block. On the Dover I-2 and I-3, it comes out of the bottom of the up control block. The other most visible difference is the wraparound metal shields on the I-2 and the I-3 did not exist in the early I valves. Other than that, they look identical to the I-2 series. This valve has been in production for quite some time, and they did a really good job with it because it stood the test of time. The earliest versions of this valve came with a green metal uh, faceplate, and the faceplate for the green ones equates roughly to the 1980s. Then they came out with the blue faceplates, which was for about the 90s. Tissen purchased the company approximately 2000, and they replaced it with the black faceplate. The black faceplates come in either metal or plastic. Oftentimes the plastic ones are removed because they are not as durable, um, and so if you run across a valve and there's no faceplate, don't just assume that it's an I-valve. Check the pressure relief cartridge. There is one other distinguishing difference between the I-2 and the I-3. On the Dover I-2, you have a four-bolt pattern that holds it onto the pump and jack outlets. On the Dover I-3, it's a six-bolt pattern. Please watch our succeeding sections on the I-2 up and down adjusting sections. Thank you.